Hello everyone, today is going to be a little bit of a review slash trying something for the first time and what that is, is paper quilling. So I purchased this kit off of Amazon for about $12, which um, obviously I could have made some of these materials myself since paper quilling is uh, the art of rolling paper basically. Um, and it's got a lot of really neat stuff that came with it. It's got this like really nice looking precision glue bottle for like very tiny teeny amounts of glue. It's got the actual like quilling tool which has uh, this kind of slit in it uh, so that you can stick the paper in and then twist to create the coils. Looks like this is a little awl so I can poke holes which I, I'm not certain I'm going to need to do that today but it came with pretty much everything. It's even got little scissors. Um, a tiny little set of tweezers, which is like really nice, really convenient. Um, the tweezers that I have are mostly like for doing your eyebrows and such, so I don't really have anything tiny enough. Um, I've got several different sets of paper colors. So I've got this kind of like red set, this like orange and yellow set, greens, blues, purples, and browns. And I think, I don't even know if there's any black in here, which seems odd, but hopefully I won't be needing it. Um, it's got this neat little, what it's, what's called a curling coach. So basically you can create your circle, stick them in there and then kind of expand it to whatever size you want to kind of keep them even, which I thought was kind of a, a really good benefit of using something like this. And there's one of these as well. So you can do the same thing with the circles or you can create heart shapes, teardrops, triangles, and they all stay the same shape and size, which I think is really, really convenient. Um, I also noticed it's got these little like pegboards in here. I actually managed to get um, a little pegboard set for myself um, off of Wish because I kind of, I knew I was going to be trying this and I was wondering if I would need it. The only thing I don't particularly like is that there seems to be some sort of weird staining on this. I don't know if you can see this like gunk everywhere, so I might want to wipe this off first. But I'm really excited to start and kind of create some art with this. I think I'm just going to show you how I'm going to use some of these tools and um, yeah, then I guess we'll do a little hyperlapse and create some art. Um, I'm going to fill up the glue bottle now. So I checked online and it looks like the uh, glue that most people use for this is Aileen's Tacky Glue, which I actually really like and have plenty of. So I'm going to squirt some into this bottle for my use. Ah uh, yeah, that's Tacky Glue. <laughs> Alright, I filled her up about this far, so now I'm going to hopefully move my cat screw the top back in and something that I think is really nice about this bottle too is it has a tiny little stopper at the top so hopefully nothing will dry out in the tip All right so this is super interesting it actually looks like they're like terrible um these little like sets that they've put together so um like they're attached at both ends which means that this will stay together pretty regularly and pretty nicely so I'm just going to kind of tear one of these pink ones off Make sure my son does not uh, attack it. Is that right, honey? All right, I'm going to start with the curling coach. I'm gonna go into the center one for the 13 millimeter circle. Uh, and if I am not mistaken, the best way to start this is to stick uh, the little sheet of paper, the little end, into the slit of your curling tool. I don't even know what to call this. Um, and then you start uh, wrapping it around. Once it's finished curling, you can take it off. So I'm just gonna lift, nice and easy, perfect. Um, and so you have this neat little coil. Um, there's a couple different like terms for the different kinds of coils you can do. This is a tight coil, and you just kind of let it be this little dot here. Um, since I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit, that is what I believe is called a loose coil. So I'm just gonna drop it into this um, 13, millimeter one and it already expanded to be that specific length so now I can take it out and all I need to do now is hold it at that size it's at thankfully it's small enough that my fingers can do that then you should take your glue squirt just a little bit onto the end if there's one thing I learned doing research for this kind of craft, it's less is more with the glue. because so you don't want to create any like aggressive spots. So that's only all the amount of glue that I'm using. 
and then I am just going to close up the gap. And I will set that aside to completely dry once it's stuck. Ta-da! First coil. So now I really want to try making this shape for this bigger flower. Um, and I think I'd like to do like maybe one of these and like two of these for my little design that I'm doing here. I'm thinking it'll fit in this 15 pretty nicely. Looks like a yes, it does. So that's just slightly smaller than the biggest one on the curling coach. So let me see if I can just make it slightly bigger in there. Perfect. Pop that out. Now I'm going to um, glue the edge first, I believe. So I'll just need to pop some glue on the corners. Now with that fully done, I should be able to pull this over here and kind of set it in. What it said online for this particular thing is you could actually glue it on the bottom and because it's like a plastic, it'll lift right off. So you can create the designs and then lift them all off in one piece uh, to create these like perfect shapes. But I'm kind of just using it as like a model for what I want things to look like. Um, so it looks like I'm gonna have to pinch this end and then kind of curl up the edges of the other two. So I'm gonna do a nice strong pinch and I want it to be pinched where the seam is just to kind of keep things nice and even. So pinch that like that. And of course, very simply, uh, depending on how much I pinch there, uh, I can pinch more layers to kind of create this teardrop shape, um, which I can use in other things. For instance, you could pop that right in there and ta-da, um, it does the same thing. And once that's done, it looks like we should kind of create like a Wolverine horns down here, but like lightly where it like curves in almost like like a very loose heart shape. So I'm just kind of going to do some of that action. Pop it down like that a little bit. If this makes sense at all. Yeah, that kind of did it. So I guess if I wanted to do this all at once, I should stick my nail in the middle grab both these ends and then pinch at the bottom to kind of create this heart shape, but just kind of let it be loose and not super aggressive on these ends. So I can like let them out a little bit and then it kind of creates that shape, which I actually really, really hate. Um, <laughs> it's just, it doesn't, it's not as long on the top as maybe I want. Maybe I want it more like this, but also I feel like that would make it look odd. Kind of make it look more try. Oh wait, no, that's actually exactly what I wanted. Yay, okay, um, then I'm gonna do what looks like five of those, uh, which I am perfectly good with. So let's do five of these. Um, and then I'm gonna start trying maybe this kind of stem situation down here and see where it goes. I've decided to go kind of rogue and come up with my own design for the last one, uh, mostly because I really think that this particular petal shape is going to be very difficult with smaller circles. So I am just pinching these and creating teardrop shapes. And I'm going to do the same thing with the, uh, the leaves to kind of create the wreath. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that in just a second. So I'm just gonna finish this up. Um, I'm gonna do a big pink flower in the center and I decided to go with this purple for some outside flowers. And once that's done, I think I'm going to put it on a nice little card, maybe put a little sentiment underneath it. It'll be cute, it'll be a vibe. Um, yeah, I'm actually like really excited about this. And this is like one of those things that again, I can do like just watching the TV and relaxing a little bit. Um, I could have gone for six, but I ended up just sticking with the five to kind of keep it similar with the pink one. And I can connect them all like that. And I have two cute little flowers and Okay, I'm changing my design because I think I'm gonna like this better and I think it'll give me a chance to kind of show off some more um, styles. So I don't remember exactly what this is called. I think it's a marquee um, where you pinch both ends and kind of curl it in the middle to kind of create this like wavy madu. Um, obviously, I'm really good at words. I'm an English teacher, it's fine. I can do what I want with English. Um, 
So I thought it would be fun instead to kind of fill in some gaps with the green and instead of making it seem like flowers and then leaves to incorporate the leaves more in with it. And that's something I've kind of noticed about like even when I'm using flowers for different types of crafts, I always think it looks so much better when you actually add the leaves interspersed within the um, flowers. So I actually think I'm just going to make a couple of these. Um, it may be some different colors um, and I might even try adding a little pinch to this one too and kind of using the ones I've already done to create these like mini marquees. Um, so as you can see, I'm kind of pinching both ends and squeezing. It's definitely focused, obviously. Um, and because this one's so little, I think it's requiring a little bit more bending. But then I can take that and kind of pop it at the edge in between this like thicker bit there and kind of create this design, which I think is gonna fill the space way better and look way more aesthetically pleasing than just having the flowers and not having any leaves but on the bottom. Um, as much as I really liked like this super cute design here, um, I don't like the idea of gluing everything on here first and then peeling it up. I'd rather not risk that, especially because uh, Sterling has already taken a bite out of this. Alrighty, I think we're getting to the point of assembly. I've got my tweezers here and ready to place things, which is actually surprisingly convenient. I have four tiny leaves in the lighter color and I have uh, four green uh, darker green leaves in the big color. Um, and I've got my flowers, of course, so I'm ready to kind of toss those things aside and focus on what I'm gonna be putting this on. Now, um, I think ideally I'd like to have this on like a card or um, something that I could put into a frame, but since I don't have any frames, uh, or shadow box frames particularly right now. I decided to use what I already have. Um, this is a canvas that I've been trying to figure out what to do with because I only used a little bit of it to test that glitter and glow paint from Five Below like several weeks, maybe months ago. Um, so in order to kind of uh, fix that, <laughs> I grabbed some leftover cardstock from my paper succulent tutorial and just because I thought it would match some of the greenery pretty nicely, I cut a little circle out of it uh, and I'm just going to glue this down on top of that. Um, and I'll link to both of these videos, the uh, Glitter and Glow Paint Review and the Paper Succulents in the little eye card up there so you can tap that um, and take a look at those if that's something you're interested in. But for now, I'm gonna glue these um, and I'm gonna finish up this little piece here and then give you my final thoughts on what I learned and I guess, uh, whether or not I think this is something that might be worth your time. Everything has been glued. I can flip it upside down and it won't go anywhere. I have some really nice metallics that'll go really nicely onto this uh, dark design. I don't know if I want to like add like a word here and a word here, or if I want to like stick it up like this maybe, and then do a word kind of on top. Maybe that's the kind of vibe I'm feeling. And I think this is my finished piece, my very first ever paper quilled art piece. And I like it, I do. Um, I think that I've learned a lot and I think I would have done some things differently were I to do this again. Um, I'm not exactly a giant fan of this like background thing that I've done here, um, but I did want to use up some other materials. So I am going to be okay with that choice that I did to do that, um, that I made to do that. Um, but yeah, I think now it's time to kind of talk about the kit and whether or not I would recommend it. Um, so first things first, um, the biggest thing I've learned is that this glue dries up like super, super fast. Like because it's tacky glue, it really has to be stored upside down and there's really no way to do that, um, which I'm not super wild about. Uh, I've kind of been like sticking it in the box, in the corner of the box, just and like leaning it upside down so that it was ready to squeeze whenever I needed it. Um, that's probably like my best tip for that, but it's still sometimes uh, had the dr glue kind of uh, dry out. Um, so if you can keep the tip like kind of damp with like some sort of paper towel or something, or like stick it upside down in a bowl, um, or like some maybe some wet floral foam even, I think that could be uh, really beneficial. So, um, the squeeze bottle, great. I like that it comes with this to kind of prevent it from drying out like in the interim. That probably would have been an easier way to do it, but it still kind of gets clogged. Um, so yeah, I definitely like the squeeze bottle aspect of this. I like this for the ideas that it gave me, not really for the practical use. I kind of mentioned this earlier. The paper strips were great. I think the system that they used to kind of keep them together was really nice and it's nice that they're kind of color organized. Um, and they're all thin and like really like 
they're not like so thick that it can't be coiled and, and bent, but like it's not super easily ripped, which I appreciated. Um, and it can be cut at varying lengths to kind of suit my needs. This I think is the star of the kit. Um, and I'm kind of going to show you why. Now this works exactly as it needed to. Um, I had absolutely no problems with it. Um, except maybe sometimes that I like can't always get it caught in. Um, I guess while I'm here, I'm also going to kind of toss another tip out here. Don't kind of put your fingers over it. I like to have a finger underneath so that I can guide um, the paper, that's the word I'm looking for, to line up straight. Whereas if I'm doing over top, then it might kind of, let me kind of show you what I mean after I do this. Um, for instance, if you can see on the side here, that's kind of like raised. Uh, sometimes if you're not paying attention, then it'll kind of like form a little tornado, which is not good when you're trying to lay things flat. I had a couple that like ended up like tornadoes and it really stuck that way after that curling. Um, so uh, it was kind of a pain to have to kind of flatten those out. Um, so I would definitely recommend doing it with the nail underneath and kind of like feeding it through your fingers like I just did there to keep it straight. Um, now for the reason that I like this guy so much is because of this um, cork board that's underneath it actually. Um, now sometimes I'll, I'll keep this stuck in here and then I'll stick it in and release it. Um, sometimes I'll just pull it off. I didn't really find one way better than the other. But something that's really nice about this one as opposed to the other one is when you stick it in, uh, it'll unroll, I guess. Just like that, just like it's supposed to. And it still has a little bit of height on the side so that you can grab and pull it out. Um, which is not something I can say for this curling coach because when I stuck it in there, it was about the height of the, um, the paper anyway. So it was a more of a dr dramatic time getting it out. And then if I didn't grab it the right way on its way out, then it got looser than the hole was anyway. This was awesome. I would highly, highly, highly recommend this if you're going to get any tools. Overall, I really liked this piece. I love the crafting idea. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to kind of pop out there was about the tweezers. Great in theory, horrible in execution. Um, these are really good for gluing the bottoms as you're trying to put them on, like holding it so that you're not getting glue all over your hands. But for placing things, it is just not good because of all the way that the coils kind of go around, it gets stuck and then kind of like, you have to kind of like pull it off anyway. Um, these were like extremely frustrating to work with. I liked them for gluing, but I didn't like them for placing. I would much rather use my fingers for that. Um, but yeah, I think that's actually all the thoughts I had. So I suppose it's time to wrap this up. I really hope you enjoyed coming on this journey and trying out paper quilling with me today. I really like this style. I might like to bring this back for some decorating of some more crafts coming up. Um, and it's just a really kind of neat way to create these really sweet looking floral designs. And I'll admit that it's time consuming, especially when you're trying to get the hang of it at first. But I think everything turned out really great. I would highly recommend giving this a shot, especially if you just have some colored paper laying around. You can easily cut your own. You do not need to spend money on this. Um, and I've seen plenty of DIY tutorials on how to create uh, a tool like this, though it is a little bit thicker, by just cutting a notch in like a chopstick or even using like bobby pins, like the ends of bobby pins uh, to wrap around and kind of create that coil. I actually already have an idea of something that I want to do with this. Um, hopefully it'll be coming in the next couple of weeks because I'm really, really excited to do it and it's gonna be super fun decor wise. So. I think that's all I had to say. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and I would love for you to be there to continue my artistic journey with me. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you then. Bye!